Hello everybody and welcome to our Friday afternoon Williamsburg session. We are live on Facebook and on YouTube. So our uh, Golden Paints YouTube channel will also be carrying this stream. So we are coming to you from our paint studio here in New Berlin, New York. And I'm Greg Watson. I am a materials and application specialist here with Golden. We are essentially the helpline for artists who are calling, have questions, emailing, we write articles that you can read that tell you about our products and about our research. And um, we're always happy to help you uh, with any of your material questions or needs. Okay, so be sure to get in touch with us. We will uh, give you the address here on the screen, but it's help at goldenpaints.com. If you want to email, you can always call us at 800 nine five nine six five four three if you ever have a question okay so we're gonna wait just a few minutes here or a minute or so to see that folks are kind of joining us today's um, um, session is going to be looking at our Williamsburg iridescent set the iridescent paints are uh, six different iridescent colors that are mica based colors beautiful metallic paints okay so um, I see that Scott at Golden Paints is here hello Greg here to help so Scott is out there in the chat on our Facebook side of things he's going to be taking questions in the comments um, as they come up so feel free to get in touch with Scott post your questions please and he will be putting some links and different things up there for you to uh, enjoy. Okay, Jane Perkins. Hi, Greg from Virginia. Hi, Jane. Welcome. Happy to have you here. I like your icon picture. It's got a nice, beautiful green in there. So, uh, and Linda's coming in from Virginia as well. Linda Smith Lewis. So I'm going to go to the overhead camera so we can sort of see the iridescent box that we're going to be undoing today. So here's our email, help at goldenpaints.com. Okay, just wanted to put that on there for you so you can see that. And remember, if you ever have any materials needs, hit us up. Okay, little Williamsburg sticker, gotta love that. Handmade oil colors right there. This is the box we're going to be working with right now. Select iridescent set, it's called. Okay, six different colors. Um, and I'm just going to sort of launch right in here and show you what we got. So you have 37 ml tubes. These are all mica best based colors. Mica is that sort of thin, um, beautiful, translucent, um, natural mineral that you might see kind of in a, a granite countertop. Or if you're hiking, you might see it sort of fleck, making sort of a reflective dance of light on the surface of a, a piece of stone or granite or something like that. Um, that's what these paints are made out of. They're very small, fine pieces of mica with different uh, iron oxide or titanium dioxide coatings on the surface. And what happens is the light kind of comes into that mica surface, bounces off, uh, through the coating, hits the mica surface, and then bounces back up. And every time it goes through a layer, it's ref refracted in a way that creates a different type of color. So that's what we have here. The six colors that are in this set, iridescent pearl white, iridescent silver, this is my favorite, my go-to if I'm doing any sort of space paintings or UFOs or anything cool like that, I'll use that one there. Iridescent pale gold, iridescent bronze, and iridescent copper, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take these and we're gonna look at them one by one and then we'll do some nice mixtures with these and show you what they can bring to your palette. Okay, you look on the back here, you'll see iron oxide coated mica particles. Titanium dioxide and iron oxide coated mica particles. So the titanium dioxide and iron oxides are coating these mica particles to give you these different looks. I'm going to bring over this board right here. And I'm just going to sort of put these on each of these. panels that I have here. These are little three by five canvas panels. And you could sort of see what each of these colors could do for you if they're kind of on their own, you know, on the, uh, the palette. These are just knifed out onto these 
three by five canvas panels, and I'm just gonna hold this up for you. It's, this is all about the shimmer, right? These are like metallic paints without the metallic, okay? You can see how they reflect, refract the light. Um, they look really uh, shimmery and brilliant, okay? That's the pearl. The pearl's like you're just your straight shimmer. If you wanted to have um, you know, a, a shimmering color that you could pull over another color or add into something just to give it a little sparkle, this is the one you'd go to. Here's your silver. And this is silver, I mean, it's silver in, it's not silver in a Rembrandt kind of way where you have the illusion of silver. This is postmodern silver where you look at it and it immediately clicks in your mind like, oh, that's silver because it's actually reflecting light off the surface. Okay, it's not the illusion of silver. So if you were doing a vase or something and, and you wanted it, or a vessel that was silver and you wanted to paint it with this, it wouldn't give you the dimensional reality of, of, a, of a rendered silver object or a metallic object like you would have in the olden, olden day kind of painting, traditional old master works. This would give you a flat silver surface and your mind would say, oh, silver, I like that. Okay, here's pewter. Pewter is a little bit of a duller kind of quality, right? Just like those old plates and cups that you have from uh, early uh, colonial America. Beautiful stuff. There's that iridescent pale gold. And these are the same pigments that we use over on the golden side of things for our iridescent colors there. And that's just lovely. We'll look at this a little bit more in depth here in just a moment. Bronze. Okay, it's almost like a, a slightly tarnished bronze a little bit, right? Just after polish and that bronze ages to some extent. Slight patina. And then copper right here. Okay, the copper, that beautiful copper color. Okay, so let's see. Um, I see that Scott's saying, is this under LED? And I think we did just get an LED light in our studio here. Yeah, so we sort of have a nice cool um, LED going on right now uh, that, that um, is, is really illuminating. That's why this pearl is, is really kind of like getting blasted, but you could sort of see it here. These are all white cards, by the way. This is what this color looks like over white. But let's do a little drawdown of each of these colors on this card right here, which will give us a sense for what it looks like over the uh, white and black. And I saw an earlier comment up there that said, what is the dry time of these colors? And while some may dry within that two to seven uh, day dry period, they're, they're a little, I would say these colors are a little slower drying. So you want to make sure that you give yourself plenty of time to lay these over the top uh, of your painting. Think about these as colors that are really well suited for the upper layers of the work. Because they're slower drying, it does make them a little less uh, of a, uh, suitable for under layers, right? Whoops, let me put that up there. All right, so here you have your colors. I'm gonna draw these down with a knife. All right, and then we'll just see what they look like. You can see that these, these pigments are a little, I call it clumpy. They're a little textural. Let me pull that up so you, you can see some of the clumping around here in the corner. These pigments are not milled the way that most colors are. Because the mica is so fine and it's so delicate, we can't mill these. So what we do is we just mix them. So because they're simply mixed, in the oil, they do tend to clump a little bit, okay? And think about those mica particles. We talked about them being like a sort of a flat uh, sheet. They're very fine, they're very flat uh, structure. So those flat structures kind of clump up with one another. And um, they tend to sort of bunch up. Now we'll look at these a little bit with some medium and I think uh, Donald might have said, will they work as a light glazing medium? Yes, I think that, uh, I think that when you use these as a glazing color, let me sort of pull that tight there and see if I can see it on the screen a little better. Yeah, it's still dark, but it's pewter. It's got that dark look to it, okay? Let's try the gold real quick here. 
And I'll pull these a little tighter so you can see how they look. Get rid of that extra there. So you can play with this over other colors, use them on their own. This one's got a little separation here. This one comes off like a little bit of a, a greenish brown here, you know? And it will mix like a little bit of a greenish brown, as you'll see here in a moment. This will mix like a little bit of a yellow. This will mix like a little bit of a dull black. And you'll see how that happens when we mix it with some color, okay? There's that copper right there. Bam. So it's super nice. We, we just love it. So let me scooch these up a little bit. I want to show you what this looks like when you take it and you add some medium to it. Let me put a little bit of color in here. For example, oops. let's take this copper here. And I'm going to take just a little linseed oil to show you what happens when you loosen up those, those clusters. Okay, right now it's kind of clumped together, right? Let's put a bunch of linseed oil in there, mix it together and make somewhat of a glaze. Now, of course, with your oil paints, you could start to see it dancing in there like that. It's, it's really awesome. Um, with your oil paints, as you put more and more medium into a color, right? start to see that just sort of shimmering around and dancing in there it's gorgeous uh, you you want to use it in thinner and thinner applications the more oil the thinner you want to put it on there right so then you can really sort of see how this starts to look when it goes thinner let me see if I can smooth that out real nice for you adding a little medium in there is going to give you a better sense for there's that LED, can you see that ring light up there? Uh, it's gonna give you a little bit of a better sort of sense for the fact that these are really strongly shimmering colors and there's a little bit of a, of a, a floating effect with the, um, with the particles in the oil. You would wanna apply that thinly and in some layers, all right? So let's look at, um, let's look at a little bit of a comparison here. I wanna show you what gold leaf kind of looks like just so that we get a reminder that these aren't just like um, a gold leaf or a silvered leaf product now look at that lights just shining off there like crazy but you can see there's my reflection there how um, consistently and uniformly metallic this surface looks this is a gold uh, leaf surface all right, I didn't do such a great job with my seams there, but you get the you get the effect of that, right? In comparison to this shimmer here, which is duller and it doesn't give you that kind of almost mirror-like effect, but it can give you quite a, a a nice effect for something that's a little less difficult to manage than the uh, than the straight gold leaf. Okay, so. Let's take a look at now what happens when you take these colors and you mix them with other colors. Stacy Resende, our education director, has been looking at this a little bit over on our Instagram page on our these like little quick lunchtime uh, vignettes of, of some of our products, which are great. If you're on Instagram, check those out. They're midweek, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I believe. This is the iridescent gold, all right? And it's just sort of a drawdown of that iridescent gold of our black and white card. And you could see sort of how it clumps up like this, right? This is it on its own before any oil is added in. Then what we've done over here is we've taken this color and we've added a little bit of, uh, we've taken the iridescent pale, we've added a little green gold into that color with a little bit of medium and then done a drawdown. So then you really can start to see I'm gonna bring it up here and see if we can see the shimmer there. What happens with the, the surface here? This is like an automotive car finish or like a uh, nail polish or cosmetic finish. It's really something that we're very familiar with in our world today, but um, not readily uh, achieved in oil paint unless you use some paints that are mica-based or metallic-based paints. This is uh, a couple different colors, the green gold and the alizarin yellow mixed in with the, um, with the pale gold. So you can kind of see how you can make mixtures that then transform the iridescent into something a little different 
that has a beautiful shimmer and, and a nice kind of color quality, all right? Let's just look at a couple mixtures that I made just this week with uh, the addition of uh, um, alizarin or uh, Indian yellow with a little bit of quin red, quinacridone red. This is almost like a, a, a rosy gold color. And then this is the yellow mixed with ultra blue. So you can see how it almost starts to take on a little bit of a green quality. That's the, the yellow quality of the, of the iridescent gold starting to mix with the blue to create this, this kind of nice shimmering color. Let's do one. Let's make some mixture because I want to show you how much color to iridescent um, is used in this kind of situation. All right, so if I'm gonna squeeze out a little of that gold, um, again, you can sort of see its nature. It's a little bit uh, thick and coarse. I wanna sort of take that down and smooth it out a little bit. So let's mix it with, I wanna show you this Quin Red a little bit here. Quin Acridone Red is just a favorite color. It's a beautiful transparent red. This is what it looks like on its own. Hold on, let me get that gold off there real quick. Nice transparency, right? It's a little cool compared to some colors, but it's, you know, it kind of hovers toward that middle range. When you're making a mixture though with the iridescent colors, they're very transparent. You don't want to go too, uh, too overboard with how much you mix in there. So a little bit at a time. So if your knife has some color on it, sometimes you just let the amount of color that's on the blade be your starting point. So let's just try that first and see what happens. And that wasn't a small pile of, of uh, gold there. There was plenty of color there. So it didn't take me too far, but at least I sort of have a sense of the tinting strength now of the quin versus the gold. All right, you could start to see though, it is tweaking it a little bit. So I'm gonna pull up this little pile Maybe just get brave and take just the littlest bit. I mean, we're talking just a little bit on this corner of the knife here. I'm just going to come in and mix that. See what we get. And that starts to take us into that kind of rose gold world, right? And this is fun stuff. I mean, you could use this in just small doses on your painting. I've covered entire surfaces with this stuff just for fun, you know? Old paintings that I don't really think are that great, that I, that I think could use a, a, an iridescent color and just come over the surface, and I just knife them right onto the surface, right out of the tube. Knife them, knife them real thin, fill in any texture, and just have a great time with it, you know? It also looks cool when you mix these with cold wax, like a cold wax product. Um, it's really fun. Um, you can get a, a kind of a translucent gold um, quality. And I saw somebody say it looks like rose gold. Uh, Leah. Uh, Leah, I think that's exactly what this feels like to me. Rose gold, it's so, it's so nice, you know? And it's a beautiful shimmer. But someone said, I like the one on the left. Let's try the gold with the ultra blue. I think that's what that was. So let's just, let's test the theory here and see that that was in fact a little bit of, let's do it right here, just right next to this one and see what they look like side by side. I'm gonna put a little ultra blue on there. I'm sorry about the tubes being a little bit of a mess here. I just let things get out of hand sometimes. All right, so I'm just gonna pull that ultra out. Beautiful, smooth, transparent blue. Gorgeous, right? Um, I'm gonna go with something similar to, I'm gonna actually, I'm a little afraid to put all that in there, so I'm just gonna try this first. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I think that's what we had over there then. And I'm gonna take it a little bit further and go even more green here. Oh, I pulled some of the rose gold in. Let's integrate it. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. How nice is that? And these colors side by side in an abstract work. You know, I do want to tell you that the mica, let's go back to this pigment particle shape and how they function. So the dry time is one factor that you want to consider with the mica. Okay, they dry rather slow. 
so thin layers is good also adding some medium to the uh to the mica colors is a good idea not only to smooth it out but also because medium can help things dry a little faster sometimes and a little tougher so let's you know consider if you use alkyd mediums in your practice this would be a great opportunity to use a little alkyd medium let's side by side those guys right there just to give it a um a little hardness I don't know a little comp like an iridescent complement you know a little green versus a little red there but very subtle okay so a little alkyd medium or a little linseed or linseed oil dryer uh, drying medium uh, dr linseed medium to sort of give these things a little durability a little toughness all right let's try let's try the pearl the pearl is, uh, I want to show you um, what that color can do for us too. This is the pearl. Ooh, look at that. The, the light is just kind of like taking and, and just kind of the white is it's just being swallowed up. But here you can see it now. So we have the, uh, the pearl is all the way on the right here. Okay. And I think of the pearl as a, being a very delicate color. This is a transparent yellow iron oxide. This is an earth color in the pearl, right? So it comes off as being that goldish kind of color. Again, ultra blue. And this is a, um, I think, ultramarine pink right here, or a quinacridone violet. So please also do green gold if you have the time. Leah, what do you want to mix the green gold into? I can do, I have the green gold here. Let's put it into the pearl first and then you can tell me what else you wanna see it mixed into. All right, let me put this up here. And then let's do some pearl and see what we got. Green gold is a gorgeous color, single pigment. It's got this kind of nice yellowish, mm, let's put it over here. Cause you don't really need much. So I'm just gonna put a little touch there. Uh, I can also put this into the, into the yellow, uh, the, uh, the gold color just to sort of see what it can do but you could see the undertone there in my light in my eyes here it looks a little more yellow than what I'm seeing on my camera right here but it is it's it's a crazy uh, luminous undertone on that so let's put some into this pearl and see what we get what if you were doing nature or uh, you know amphibians or uh, fish or underwater scenes you were doing butterflies anything that has a natural iridescence to it or interference to it could you know be keep worked up with these colors there's the uh, pearl with the green gold and again it's always cooler when you put some medium in here I think so let's do a bunch of medium and see what we got that was a lot of medium, but I think I think it can handle it because we have a lot of paint. So mix that up real good. There's a lag, says Tommy. Yeah, sorry about that. There's sometimes a lag with the uh, the internet service being up in the country and all. We have to deal with some of that kind of stuff. I'm just gonna kind of go like this and pull it out on the card here. So then you have, let's see if I can find that shimmer. You could start to see it in there a little bit, right? And this is, uh, this is something where, you know, you just, tr you try it and you see what you can get. It's a little bit of a fun uh, opportunity to play with uh, colors in the studio. Diane's asking what medium I'm using here. Diane, for this uh, purpose, I'm just using some linseed oil. All right, a little linseed oil, you know, so you're not getting the body that you would get with an alkyd product or uh, something that has maybe stand or resin in it. It's just a very sort of low key oil. All right, here's the green gold. Again, I'm just gonna pull that down and show you the undertone there. Let's put it in with this gold color here. I like that, I like that, but it's, 
it takes it to a place that's a little more yellowish and bright. It almost starts to... But it's almost a different type of gold. It's like uh, pushing toward a, a 18 karat gold maybe or something. If I wanted to go in the other direction and go toward like a, a 24 karat gold, Sorry, I'm lingering on gold here, but that's, what can we do? Okay. I'm just gonna go like this, and then I'm gonna come in here with some Indian yellow. And I think this kind of gives you the effect of a brilliant 24 karat gold type of product. And then we'll mix something up with one of these darker uh, colors and see what they can do. And then we'll bid you adieu. Yeah, look at that. You get that really beautiful orangey gold. Okay, so you can start to see. So Diane said that would be great for a King Tut mass painting. Oh, please do that, Diane, that would be great. And then send it to uh, 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 G. Watson at uh, goldenpaints.com. I wanna see that one, that's fantastic. Okay, all right, so that's the gold. Let's look at some copper. Let's see what the copper can do. And here again, you're working with a color that functions a little bit like a red, okay? So if we were gonna do a red, let's say we wanted to try to make like a shimmering purple here. I'm gonna bring in something like a phthalo blue, which in most cases is gonna be, you know, a, you know, not in most cases, this is a very strong blue, okay? I'm gonna, so I'm gonna put just a little bit on there because you don't need much. So let's try to make a purplish shimmer here. I could have put my Egyptian violet in there, the dioxazine purple, Egyptian violet, amazing color, hugely strong purple. But let's see, because this is a reddish and this is a blue, if we can kind of head this toward purple. Let's see what it does for us here. I'm just going slow and steady with this thalo. All of a sudden you'd use your whole tube of copper trying to uh, make a purplish color out of it because if you get that thalo out of, out of hand, it, it can start to take everything over as you all know, I'm sure. Now, if you wanted to tiptoe toward it, you could try your ultra blue, you know, or your anthra blue, endanthrone blue, your anthraquinone blue. We call it endanthrone over on this side. Ooh, look at that undertone how that starts to sort of like breathe this beautiful blue under there. That's kind of nice. I like that. So you could do, you could play with that where this stuff is nice because it has a little bit of a, a different mass tone than it does an undertone. The undertone being very beautiful blue kind of color. So I'm starting to head toward a nice, I don't know what you'd call that, a rosy, rusty shimmer right there. And that I like. Let's just put a little oil in there and see what it says. I'm doing a painting right now with space trash. So I'm using a lot of different iridescent colors in that painting. And this might be something that I'd want to play with here on that one. Okay, ooh, there it starts to, there it starts to do its thing now. And if you had an alkyd resin, most oils don't like to be applied sort of a little thicker like this, but alkyds can almost handle to be applied a little thicker so you can maybe get away with doing something that has that iridescent shimmer in a thicker application. Or a couple applications and you might get yourself to something that's really quite nice. So I'm just gonna pull up to the front camera here and uh, say to you all, thank you so much for uh, participating today and uh, joining us to look at these wonderful iridescent colors. We have six iridescent colors in Williamsburg. Um, if you have any questions about them, please do contact us at help at goldenpaints.com or call us 800-959-6543. We're uh, here Monday through Friday, 30 to five to uh, take your calls. Um, and uh, we're, we're, we're always enjoying that stuff. 
I think uh, Diverted Flight just made a good point there that you also check out in the comments. Thank you all so much, and we hope you have a wonderful 2021.